Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for International Day of Families and this special event about a family strengthening project um, that's taking place right now in Baringo County, Kenya. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land in which we're all dialing in from today, pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I'll let you know that this event is going to be recorded for those who can't join us today. Um, and please do um, keep your microphones on mute throughout the event and your cameras can be on, that's okay. Um, but if we do get any kind of bad bandwidth with our team in Kenya, we might ask to turn those cameras off. So we're here today to share with you the incredible difference that our family strengthening project is having in households throughout Baringo County, Kenya. This is one of the three communities where So They Can is working. Um, in September last year, I actually had the pleasure of heading over there um, and seeing the amazing impact that this project in particular is having. Um, I remember uh, stepping inside one of the family's homes um, and also going to one of the uh, convenience shops that this um, family had set up just recently um, to support their family through the income generation activity that takes place in the project. And it was truly remarkable the difference that this had had made in that family um, and I'm really excited that you guys are all going to get to hear a little bit about that um, this evening. So joining us and um, to tell you about this amazing project and the impact that it's having is James, our Head of Community Development and our co-founder and CEO Cass who's tuning in from New Zealand. So let's head over to James first. I'm just going to stop my screen share so we can pin on James. Where are you, James? There we are. I'm going to just ask you to unmute as well. Hey, James, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, Ellie, awesome. hi. Good. So James, let's start with what family means to you, given that it's International Day of Families. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey from childhood to today. Thank you, thank you, uh, Ellie and everybody joining us. I'm really happy to, you know, have this platform. You know, we need to talk about what we do. So my name is James. I am the Assistant Country Manager, Kenya, as well as the head of uh, the Community Development uh, Program. Uh, this has uh, four components. We have the child and youth development. We have uh, women empowerment um, and community health. And of course, we have family strengthening that we will be talking about uh, today. Yeah, so uh, Ellie asked me what uh, family means to me. Um, you know, strong families are key to building, uh, you know, they are the building blocks uh, for strong societies. And uh, to me, um, I know that every child has a right to grow up in a, uh, in a loving family. And the family provides us with a sense of identity and belonging. It is a safe space uh, and enables us you know, to give and receive care and protection uh, uh, you know, when we need it. Uh, so uh, it is where we experience positive childhood uh, experiences, which are essential for healthy development. So when one is separated from a family for so long, it creates a void. And I'm talking about my experience, you know, uh, having grown up in an institution. Uh, this void, which comes, you know, accompanied with, uh, with trauma, never heals. It never heals, uh, but you can, cope, you can cope with it. So I've learned to cope with it, and many, many of the children that we serve uh, have to have to do the same. So the family tracing and reunification is is is, is the most uh, uh, clear way of uh, dealing with the uh, with separation. And I think uh, every effort should be made to make sure that families remain together, uh, that we prevent separation. Where separation is inevitable, I think we should choose the best next alternative uh, within the spectrum of family-based care. Uh, we have uh, adoption, we have, uh, we, we have uh, foster care, we have guardianship. Um, and where, you know, as a last uh, uh, resort, uh, all these are not possible, then we should choose a um, small group care. 
like we had in our students home, uh, holding our students home, and only for a short period of time. So to me, that sense of identity, that uh, sense of belonging is very important. Uh, and I am so happy that I'm in a space where I'm now helping other children to, to realize this, uh, having been on both sides where I was a recipient of, uh, of mm -hmm. care. And um, now I'm able to be on the other side where I'm facilitating um, the care uh, for others. And uh, for me, my journey has been very, you know, interesting. I would say that um, from the age of six, I was in a children's home in Nairobi um, due to issues to do with um, just being destitute and separation. Um, and therefore, that is where I was. And I, I spent the rest of my childhood uh, in that institution. But I'm quite fortunate that um, destiny, never abandoned, uh, destiny never abandoned me. So um, many years down the line, I was able to go back to the student's home that uh, cared for me. And uh, this time, I went back there as a director um, in 2006. And in 2015, I joined Sodegan as a village director of a holding and students' home, um, which was a post taking care of orphaned and, uh, and vulnerable children. So to cap it all, you know, as head of the community development program of Sodegan, I will now manage a transformative community-based uh, program, supporting children uh, reintegrated with their families uh, through our child and youth development project as well as supporting vulnerable families through the family strengthening project, which we are now speaking about. Um, I'm so glad that I'm able to be part of it. Yeah, thanks so much, James. Thanks for sharing that personal story with us. Um, I know that like you, you spoke about that while I was in Kenya, and we had a good chat about it in the car when we were traveling one day to one of the schools, and it's really um, stayed with me. It was really inspiring to see kind of how your previous experiences have kind of shaped where you are today. Um, like Thank I said, so we, we are here to talk about our family strengthening project. So let's get straight into it. Um, so can you, I suppose, just give everyone a bit of an overview on what it is, um, how it's supporting families um, and the impact that it's having right now, um, particularly in Baringo County. Thank you. Thank you. Um... For that, so why um, our FSP exists, the family standing project. You know, each child needs someone to support them uh, to grow. You know, we know that many parents worldwide, you know, are, are not able to provide this. They face they, they hardships. They are unable to give proper care. At this in turn, they exposes the children to negative influences and other forces which prevent them from normal development. And mostly they fail to achieve their full potential. And so each parent needs the resources to provide the basic minimum, daily basic minimum for their family and to positively participate in the social and economic um, activities uh, of their communities. Uh, so by empowering families through our family standing project, uh, we support families to stay together because I, mean, I talked about the importance of family uh, to prevent separation. So we help them stay together by enhancing their social and economic uh, capacities. We, we enroll children in, in, in school and retain them. So by doing that, we are contributing to the building of the community human capital uh, for these uh, communities. Our intervention helps build resilient communities, uh, which are able to cope with shocks uh, and other challenges. And with time, when STC exits these communities, we should be able to leave them uh, better than uh, we found it. Uh, so who do we support? Um, just put it into context, you know, we. We are working in uh, Baringo County. This is one of the 47 administrative units. And the specific community we are working with is, uh, is a pastoralist community. You know, that up to them still have to move 
from place to place, you know, looking for water, looking for pasture uh, for their for their animals. Eighty percent, around eighty percent of the adults, you know, never received education. And at any given time, depending on where you are, you know, some are very Sorry, remote. Sorry, You will find that fifty to seventy percent. Sorry, James. Yes. Um, I'm just going to ask if everyone can turn their cameras off because I think that we're getting a little bit um, of bandwidth issues um, with you, James. I think if we turn our cameras off, we might um, we might be able to um, make the internet a little bit better. Thank you, everyone. We might make the um, internet a bit more stable for James. Awesome. Are you there, James? Okay, well, um, while James is having a few internet issues, um, oh, you're, are you back with us, James? Sorry, everyone, this is the um, beauty of um, communicating with Africa sometimes. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So, I'm um, sorry, James, we had a bit of an internet cut out then, but I think you're back now. Um, so, oh. James, who, how were the, so um, the Family Strengthening Project runs over a three year cycle for families. So families come into the project um, and they're in, in the project for three years, that's right. So how sure. do families, how are families supported? And firstly, I suppose, how are families even selected for this um, project? Thank you, Ali. So uh, let me just talk about how uh, we choose these families. Families are usually uh, referred to so they can by community leaders, by the local administration, like the chiefs, uh, churches and schools as well. And also we work with champions of change. These are community-owned resources. These are people from the community. They understand these communities. And also they, they visit this, this, this uh, family. So they also are able to refer cases to us. Uh, referrals can also be given by, so they can start in their, you know, when they encounter such families, uh, when they are working. Our social workers would visit all these cases. Uh, ideally, they would, uh, they would meet with the, especially the, the, the adults in the family, uh, to verify the information and to just pick up any other concerns. They then prepare a report, and this report will have recommendations about confirmation that the family is deserving and also uh, outline the kind of support that uh, this family should be able to, 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 to receive. We then have a, a staff committee, and this staff committee evaluates these cases and using a set criteria, you know, we are able to score so that this helps us to, to be objective and uh, enables us to take the most vulnerable families because we can't always take all, all, all the, 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 the referred cases. Um, once we have taken them on board, uh, I would like then to talk about the kind of support uh, we, we give them. So all these families are vulnerable. Most of them, they are at breaking points. So, we start with food hampers, and we spend the first year at least uh, uh, delivering uh, food hampers so that at least you know we can stabilize them. Uh, we help with the issue of uh, nutrition uh, for the children. Uh, once that is done, we enroll the children in school, uh, and we do that by enrolling them in the nearest schools where they are in public uh, institutions. We provide all the school requirements, including the uniforms, the books, if need be, and the small, small fees uh, that may be levied by the institutions. Yeah, so once the children are settled in school, we now start working with the guardians. We, 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 we conduct business skills training. Remember, most of them have not been to school. So just simple, you know, business skills, you know, uh, practically based uh, business skills training. And we are in this training, we also incorporate things to do, topics to do with children's rights, um, the gender issues, environment, uh, parenting skills, which is also a big challenge, and access to government services. 
we guide them to select suitable economic activities uh, that most likely, these are most likely to increase their household income because of course we want to work with them so that in the end they're able to provide uh, for their families. So we take them through access to government services because we find like, for example, a family of student with no birth certificates, they don't know the processes and these services are available in, in government offices. We simply really just try to explain to them and where need be, we bring in a, a government official to, to just uh, uh, talk to them. Yeah, so uh, being a pastoralist community and not using to, uh, not used to tilling land, for example, and, and uh, farming can also be uh, an economic activity. We now also introduce them to farming. And in fact, uh, quite a number of our families are now doing uh, kitchen gardens and they are producing uh, some crops in, in addition to their traditional you know, livestock uh, keeping. Yeah, so we, we once they've selected these uh, economic activities, we, we find them, sort of, sort of we give them a grant and we work with them to establish or to expand whatever it is that they have. And we, we try to help them to look at everything economically. If it is a, a keeping goods, for example, that they see it as a, an economic activity, that they can increase the number of goods. So uh, we work with the, we, we, we then work with the champions of change uh, who work with our staff to do continuous monitoring of these families. They visit the families and they visit the schools to make sure that the, the children remain in school. They visit the families to make sure that the support we are giving is making, is creating a change and that it is being used uh, in the way that uh, we, we, we expect. Yeah. So yeah so Sorry, um, so we're going to uh, meet one of the families in a moment when we play a video. Um, so, yeah. and, and that family has been um, supported with goats, which is, um, you know, great that you're talking about that. What, how, can you tell us a little bit, um, just before we play that video, about the impact of the Family Strengthening Project to date? Like, how many families are in the project right now? Um, and, yeah, just a little bit about the impact. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So we remember this this project uh, started in 2017. Yeah, we, we you know we started going there around 2016, but took the first families in 2017. So we we have so far uh, supported 60 families. That's about 300 children. Uh, they have benefited from our program to date. So currently we have 40 families uh, because as you know we. We support these families for three years and we exit them and we have to take new ones on board. So now we have 40 families. Combined, these are about 204 children uh, who are at various levels of school. Uh, a few of them, are school, of course, are still at home as, as toddlers. So we have seen uh, supported families progressively lift themselves uh, from extreme poverty, you know, and being able to increase their household income and uh, their family assets, you know? So uh, the aim is that they live a dignified life and they be able to provide for their own needs. Uh, the families have also remained together. Remember, we are talking about prevention of separation. And so we are very keen to see that the children are now within their families and they are not spread across different places with different relatives. Uh, so majority of them, you know, we make sure that we see that they, they remain together and that they remain in school. So right now we have uh, the first group of the children that we took on board almost clearing secondary school. So I talked about uh, developing human capital in this community and this will be the first batch at least uh, and, and so they can. Yeah, so this is what to, this is how we do it. For example, if a family gets like five goats, and they look at it as an economic activity. We are saying within three years, if, for example, only three goats give birth for, for the three years, at the end of it all, they'll have nine additional goats, even without counting the, the five. We know that they'll be selling some of these goats when, for example, they have to, to take students to school. Uh, once they have exited the, the project, uh, they can uh, access uh, health care for their children and themselves also by maybe selling some of these goods. And so within three years, they still have nine goods and these goods can continue to, uh, to, 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 to multiply. And eventually it, it, it is going to be a big hurt uh, 
Uh, that means that they can live off these uh, animals. And if they are already also doing farming, that also supplements their, you know, their, their, their income yeah. as well as their, their diet. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's a sustainable future for everyone, I suppose, involved, yeah. which is brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much, James, for sharing that insight um, with us. It's really great to hear a little bit more about the project and, and how it all works. So I just want to yeah. move on quickly to the video and um, before we hand over to Cass and then we are going to come back um, and have some questions towards the end of the event. So if you do have any questions for James, which I'm sure um, you will, then just put them into the comments section and we'll get to those um, at the end. But thanks so much, James. Really appreciate um, sharing your insights there. Thank so you. we're just going to put on a video now. Um, now, this is Chepon Sangi. Um, she is a mother of eight who is a, currently a participant of the Family Strengthening Project. So bear with me one second and I will just get that up for you. <clears throat> Sorry guys. <laughs> Make sure I share that properly. Screen cool. Hope everyone can see that. My name is Joshua Lokdor. I'm a social worker working for so they can. I'm in the family of Chebosanke Lotuliale, a widow woman. We identified the family the year 2021. We did an assessment and we supported the family after confirming that they were needy and vulnerable. Uh, we supported the family with IJ uh, of goats. We gave them seven goats and uh, the goats has now increased to 17 goats, all of them, and they are progressing very well. We also supported the family with uh, uh, the support of the children who are school going. We gave the children purchased the school uniforms. We also uh, took one of the, uh, uh, the elder boys to high school and offered them a scholarship. And uh, all the children have also undergone through guiding and counseling. They have also gone through the training, life skill training, and the child rights training. My name is Chepo Sange Lutuliale. I have eight children. My firstborn son is in Form 2. My secondborn son is in Form 1 at Chemulingot High School. And the rest of the children are also in school. Life back in the day was difficult. We were sleeping without eating. We were begging for food from neighbors. I had no money to pay for my children's school fees. My children would get sent away from school to go bring money. I couldn't afford to pay for them because I did not have a job. I felt overwhelmed with many thoughts. I am happy for the God's support. Even before the God's support, I was given food package. At the time, I was in a really bad condition. Those were hard times. So they can ask me to identify the type of support I wanted. I proposed to be supported with God's. So they can have supported my children's education. They have paid for their exam fees and bought them school uniform. We were very happy. When my son completed class 8, Esti supported him with shopping and school fees. And my son Andrew was able to join Form 1. I was very happy. Uh, my name is Andrew Pleasant. 
I am 15 years old. I go to the Mullingot Secondary School. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be a teacher. So I help other kids to learn. My goal is to become successful like other successful people in Baringo County. I want to venture into other businesses and multiply my goals and also educate my children to be successful so that they may improve our family condition. So, what an empowering story. I just love that video. And a big thank you to Peter, one of our amazing staff members in Kenya who put that together recently, uh, particularly for this event. Um, so, Cass, I'm going to hand, hand over to you now. Um, I know you've got some stories that you'd like to share from your recent trip um, over there. So I'm just going to spotlight you. <laughs> there we go. Um, and yes, please go ahead and help talk to everyone. Thanks, Ellie. And thank you also, James, for sharing your personal story as well as what you do for us at So They Can. Um, yeah, I love that video too. It was amazing that we got that from the ground over the last few days. And uh, really nice for me to see it as well because... Uh, portrayed one of the families that I went to see when I was over there a few months ago, just in March. So every time I go to Africa, uh, I visit some of our Family Strengthening Project families, and that's partly to check in. But if I'm completely honest, it's really about me going somewhere positive. So my trips to Africa, they um, they always have an element of heartbreak and at the end of them, I therefore schedule a visit to one of one of our families because without fail, they impress on me the impact our work has and they help me alleviate my struggle with the fact that there is still just so much to do over there. And Christine is a perfect example. So I met Christine that you see here with her children, um, as I said, a few months ago in March when I was last over there. And Christine is a single mother. As she said, she has eight children. She lives in remote Baringo, Kenya, which is our third community that we work with across East Africa. And Christine started in our um, three-year family strengthening project 18 months ago. So she's halfway through our project. And when she entered the project, we provided her, as James explained previously, we give her business mentorship, um, uh, psychosological, psychosological, sociological support. We give her children educational support to enable them to go to school. So whilst education in Kenya and Tanzania is free, the, the reality is children still have to pay for their uniforms, their textbooks, their stationery, and contribute to a school feeding pro program. So that's often quite prohibitive for, for most of our families over there. So we support um, families with, with that funding for school. Uh, we also really focus on uh, the sustainability of, of the of the training that we're giving them. So this is this income generating training that we that we give uh, the families, and in this case, Christine. So, as she said, we we presented her with six goats. And eighteen months on, when I went to visit in March, it was so good to see her and her children. She's rebuilt her home to a really sturdy new hut. She's bred from those original six goats and she now has 17 goats that provide milk and profit for her whole family. Uh, she's a perfect example of someone who, when given just a small amount of support, relishes that support and really soars. She took the knowledge that she gained from that income generating training that we gave her and she started farming bees alongside her goats. So she now harvests and sells their honey, generating more income for, for her family. And it was just so good to see her eight children because um, they look so different from 18 months ago when they first entered our Family Strengthening Project. They're now all healthy and they're strong. So in 18 months, Christine and her children, they'll exit our Family Strengthening Project with the ability to sustain her children's health and their education and she's now just got a whole different standing in the community. So this project really is, is life changing and it's incredibly inspiring. Um, and I admire our team on the ground that make it work under James's great leadership. 
And I just also wanted to reiterate the impact that this $1,400 a year sponsorship has on an entire family. It's, it's pretty enormous. Um, and perhaps this is best illustrated through the story of, uh, of Limo. So, and, and it explains what life for so many of our children and their families looks like without our support. So the before and the after entering our family strengthening project for families is really extreme. So in uh, Baringo County, there's another family and it's uh, headed by Chepo Kapsot, a daddy. I'll call her Chep for obvious reasons. She's a really beautiful 25-year-old widow and she's mother. She's the mother of four children, one girl and three boys. And she also provides and cares for her 15-year-old younger sister. So Chep's middle boy is Limo. He's a real cutie. And uh, he's actually my daughter Mia's sponsor child. And this is Limo here in the middle wearing his orange Black Lives Matter t-shirt. Uh, and we were really worried about Limo losing weight and missing school uh, when I was over there a few months ago. And so Joshua, our amazing social worker in Baringo, he went to visit Limo's family. And that's when we found out about Chep and her struggles. So Chip lives in this small house. Um, Ali, if you just want to show the next slide. So she's in this small hut with her four children, and I said, and her younger sister here in the school uniform. This roof on her home, it's covered by an old black polythene sheet. It leaks all through the rainy season. And um, really sadly, Chip's husband died of malaria just two years ago. The family did actually have a few goats before Chip's husband uh, died but they sold them all to pay for the medication to try and save and try and save his life. So now to earn money, Chip, she plaits hair, she makes chicken coops, um, beds, utensil, like washing utensil racks from local trees. And she takes those to the local markets to try and sell them to earn some income. She also fetches water and collects firewood for people. Um, and I can remember when I was over there speaking with her and she said that when all else fails I sacrificed my whole day collecting cooking collecting and cooking wild fruit though it consumes a lot of time she said around 12 hours to be ready it really concerned me when she mentioned that local fruit this is called the so rich fruit uh, a horribly ironic uh, name and it's a horrific reminder of the reality of life for some in our communities so when these people are, are starving, they're forced to pick this so these so rich berries and they're absolutely deadly unless they're boiled for at least 12 hours. And it's not a rumor. Sadly, many have lost their children to so rich poisoning. And when interviewed just before starting in our family strengthening project, Chip said that for the past two months, life has not been easy for her family. They've slept without food and they rarely get two meals a day. So Last week, we brought Chip and her family into our Family Strengthening Project, and this will literally change their future. So yes, as Mother Teresa said, a quote that I love, she said, the problem with the world is we draw our circle of family too small. And so we just hope that by extending your circle of family tonight to include one of our Baringo families, you will sustainably change many lives and you'll enrich your own in doing so. So thanks for, for coming along and back to you, Ellie. Thank you, Cass. That was so great to kind of, um, well, see the first story of success and kind of how different the lives have become since being 18 months into the project. But then obviously the real contrast of um, how it all begins and, and why people are um, going into the project in the beginning. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. As Cass said, um, if there's anyone here that's on the call today, and they're wondering how they can get involved in the family strengthening um, project. Our family sponsorship program is a really great place to start. And we've just kind of refreshed this program a little bit. Um, so now what will happen is um, when you sign up as a family sponsor, um, you'll actually be linked with a family in the project um, and you'll receive um, just to kind of informate, just basic information about that family. There won't be any letter writing like there is in other programs, um, but there will be an impact report that you get every single year um, as you follow their kind of three year journey um, in that project. And you'll get to hear updates on how they're going and how children are 
um, and all that kind of important stuff. So um, we'd love to see some more of you inside um, that sponsorship program. I'm hoping, and I think that we have got some of our family sponsors here on the call today. So thank you so much to everyone who already sponsors a family. Um, we're really excited to be able to link you with those families um, mm. and take you on that journey as well. So I think we're about ready for some questions. Um, and I know that we've got a couple have come through to me in the direct message, but um, if you do have any, please send them through um, and I will throw them to Cass um, or James, whoever I think can answer them best. <laughs> um, okay, so our first question, and sorry, just put them into the comment section um, that's here in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them. So anyway, we've got one here. Um, what should I go with first? Let's go that one. Um, is it just in Baringo that the family strengthening project, like where the family strengthening project happens? So um, James, do you want to answer that one? I'll just unmute you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll answer that early. Thank you. Yes, for now we we are serving uh, Baringo County. You know, it's a it's a vast area that we are, we are we are covering, and we haven't even reached the like over uh, hundred and thirty thousand. You know, residents that you know are in that section in, in that uh, region. So yes, for now it's Baringo County, but of course uh, the, the the idea is to serve Baringo and other surrounding counties in future. Okay, and um. Is so, and obviously we have another uh, community in Nakuru. So, could would there be need in Nakuru for the same sort of family strengthening project, um, or would it be slightly different if we did go there? Yes, it's a, it's a good question. You know, we we are actually based here in Nakuru, and uh, of course this is where everything started. And yes, if you are talking about the need for family strengthening in Nakuru, there is a need for for that as well. You know, Nakuru has a several informal settlements or, or slums. We also have uh, remote communities, you know, some of them we serve through our women empowerment uh, project. So yes, there is need and uh, we really desire that uh, at some point we also able to bring on board uh, some families in Africa. Mm. James, maybe another question for you actually. Sorry, you're in the hot seat. <laughs> um, what happens after three years when the family leave the project? Do we continue to check in with them to make sure that they're tracking well, um, or um, are, are we content with with their progress and and they kind of just go off? How does that work? Right, that's also another good question. So uh, when we take on these families, we we prepare them. We even for exit right from the beginning, so they know they so they can for three years that they are they are encouraged to to make the best use of the opportunity. Uh, why? Because uh, once they have exited, and of course we, we, we you know, for, for, for majority, they, 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 they do well, but uh, the staff uh, have to follow up. I talked about home visits, school visits. Uh, they have to visit the, the businesses, you know, that this, uh, uh, the parents have started, you know, the economic activity. So it takes all the time of the, of the staff. And so, uh, I wouldn't say that we we intentionally visit these families, but remember these families are just part of the communities that we serve. So even when they exit, they are still in the same community. So we are able to encounter them. And in, in, in some cases, we even invite them to sort of encourage the, the, the new families and you know, talk about their stories, uh, talk about their successes. So yeah, we interact with them, but you know they are now out of the program, of the project, and we use the resources uh, uh, better with the with the with the existing funds. Yeah, can I just quickly add to that, Ellie? Just mm. um, just two things quickly from me. The first is that uh, for those of you that don't understand the concept of our champions of change, so there are local community members that we have um, chosen because of their mm. uh, integration in the community and their awareness of the children and the community and the families. So. Certainly, whilst they're officially not still in our family strengthening project because they've exited and they're in a position where they don't need to be, if anything was to go wrong, we would hear about that through our champions as well as our local team up, up in Baringo County. 
And then I just think I just wanted to add to that first question because I thought it was a good one and James answered it really well. But we are currently focusing on Baringo community because it's a very rural pastoralist community. And when we started there eight years ago, the concept of sending children to school was very remote. It wasn't something that families really believed in. And so a lot of our work is around sensitizing communities and parents to understand the importance and the impact educating their children will have long term. Um, our core focus is where they can is education. So through this family strengthening project and the support of the children, we've been able to get a lot more of the Baringo children going to school and their parents valuing education. And then our family strengthening uh, parents often become champions for just that cause of helping others in that community to realize the incredibly positive and sustainable impact it will have on their family's future if children are educated. Really lovely, thank you, Cass. We have one last question and we have one minute. <laughs> so um, but let's go for it. Um, okay, we have two more questions actually. Um, Kathy, a quick one um, for you. Um, it costs $120 a month to sponsor a family. Um, and that can be per, that can be a month, you can pay that monthly, um, or it, lots a few people do pay that as a one-off annual um contribution as well. So it just depends. Um, but usually it's a monthly um uh, donation. And um tomorrow we'll actually send everyone the link to this event. Um, the replay plus a bit of information in, in the email. So if you are interested, we can absolutely um, send you the links to where you need to go and stuff like that. Um, and on that, sorry, again, from a personal point of view, after meeting these families and having just been with them, whilst um, you as a sponsor will get, as Ellie said, the update annually on the impact you're making and the information about the family, um, the other thing that's really nice that I love when I'm on the ground is the families know that they're being sponsored and supported, that their family's been extended to another family back um, on this side of the world. And they find that incredible, given the lack of government support they have over there, that those of us back all the way back here actually care about them and are prepared to extend that kind of care to them. And it means that alone means a great deal to them that there's someone on the other side of the world that cares enough about their family. And that does amazing things for their self-esteem as well so just wanted to reiterate that impact too that they were aware that they have these friends on the other side of the world caring for them and their children okay the last question james i might just um hand this one over to you put the spotlight um on you again um is there a long waiting list of families wanting to participate in the project sorry come again come again the question is, is there a waiting list of families wanting to participate in the project? Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ellie, we, as I say, even when I was explaining about our process of, you know, taking on board these families, we, we often have to turn down some, some, some cases, even when they need our support, because of course we're working on, on, on budgets and we can only take uh, so many. So there are many, many deserving cases and yes, we, we, we have a waiting list and in a, the cases just keep coming, you know, it's just building up. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we really welcome you guys to support us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that's the end of the session. If anyone's with us still, I'd love to actually, we've got quite a few people still on the call. So if everyone could put their cameras on, I'm gonna try and um, take a photo here. <laughs> <laughs> give it a go anyway you might have to do two screenshots but it's um good to get um photos and i hope um thumbs up if you enjoyed the session sorry about the um sorry about the uh tech issues that we had but that's just what happens sometimes <laughs> we're very used to that great right, everyone crack a smile <laughs> Thanks so much for joining everyone. It's been really awesome having you on the call with us today. Oh, I've just seen one more, a few more people join. I'm gonna just do one more screenshot, sorry. <laughs> everyone smile again. <laughs> awesome, I got you all. Um, yeah, thank you very much for joining today. It's been, it's been really lovely to, um, to have some new faces and some familiar faces also on the call. And 
we are going to post the replay to this on our YouTube link and we'll send the link um, to everyone tomorrow who registered. So if you have anyone um, that you'd like to forward it on to or um, watch it again, then um, we will um, have that for you ready tomorrow. So thanks so much. Can, Ellie, can I just say, if anyone wants to talk any further about this or wants more information or wants just to talk directly to me, just email me, Cassandra, at so they can dot all org. Lovely to uh, have you all here too. And yeah, happy to answer any questions, but I can't reiterate more the impact it will have on their annual lives too, if you are able to support it. And hopefully then we can get you over there to, to meet the families one day. Yeah. Absolutely. Amazing experience. Cool. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you to everyone in New Zealand who joined us. I know it's a couple of hours later for you, so thanks so much. Yeah. Have a lovely evening and we'll see you again very soon. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Thank you, James. Thanks. Thank you to the team Bye. in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye, everyone.